Come on. Yes, please select. Ah. Be right back. I just left my notes in the other room. Okay. Hello. Hi, John. How are you? Good. Did you shovel all day, John? No. <laughs> Good. <laughs> no, I gave that up. <laughs> Smart man. <laughs> I wish I could say the same. The ID on this, is, I'm using my sister-in-law's iPad. That's why it has a different ID on it. I see. We're going to call you Dorothy all night. Dorothy, thank you. <laughs> you know, and so can the host. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but you don't want to because it's your... Dorothy's. So you don't want to change it. Mm -hmm. I'm not... No, I'm only going to use it for an hour or two. So. <laughs> exactly. 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 John, are you here or are you upstate? I am actually in my sister-in-law's living room in Saugerties. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I was wondering how much snow upstate got. Less. Oh. Less. Yeah, this was a coastal storm. Well, I got enough for y'all. <laughs> I know that feeling, yeah. My daughter I sent me a picture today from a friend of hers in Binghamton, and you couldn't even see the car. They got four four feet, I think she said. Yeah. You couldn't even see the car. I got oh, close. Binghamton got whacked. Wow. Yeah. I got close to three feet. Really? And where, where do you live? Outside of Stone Ridge between Olive Bridge. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I shoveled a lot today, and it's still not enough. <laughs> You're in the I snow sweet spot. guy has gotten here yet. Uh, me neither. <laughs> Mark got here. My assistant, he got in, and I don't need to get out. So, right. Yep. Make and do. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Hi how are you? Hi, Ashley. Hi, Peter. Hi, John. Hi, Judy. Oh, Peter. We do not have a quorum. Not yet. Oh, dear. Everybody's shoveling. <laughs> but you I don't hear from anybody. To get on to Zoom. You just need to go sit down and... Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, I will share my life with you. Eighth day of Hanukkah. No. Very pretty. Yeah. Happy Hanukkah, Judy. Thank you. Yes, happy Hanukkah. Yeah. And uh, the 21st is the conjunction. Yeah. Jupiter, Jupiter and Saturn will be conjunctioning. Yeah, next we're Monday. probably pretty close now. Here comes Brian. Next Monday. Yep. yep. Here comes Brian. And Stuart. And that gives us a quorum. Yay. Good evening, everybody. Hello. Hi, Brian. Hi, Hi Brian. Happy holidays. Try it, cat. You too. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, tonight, that's the only thing you're going to get is Ernie. <laughs> Fair enough. We have a quorum. Went. We do. She spent a lot of time on my, on my thing today, but she's gone somewhere for now. <laughs> Such a cutie. I love when she hangs out there. Yeah. We always, we could, we could have her a honorary. <laughs> we always have a quorum. I'll start listing her on the minutes. <laughs> Hi, Stuart. Hello. Hello. How are you? 
Okay, how are you? I'm good. Good. I'm Connor. My God, we got a quorum. We do. We're only missing James. Hello, everyone. Hi, Connor. Hi, Connor. Hi. <clears throat> no video, Connor. No, no. I uh, I'm on my tablet today, and uh, it's uh, not flattering. <laughs> This isn't flattering for me either, but I uh, went with it anyway. <laughs> Snow was a good excuse. <laughs> I'm going to let my baritone carry this one. Um, <laughs> one thing I just wanted to mention really quick. Um, I had talked to uh, Bill about, um, th through the ZRC, that when we were talking about it a couple meetings ago, putting... Um, essentially environmental easements on deeds. And I actually, he put me in touch with a lawyer at the, uh, from the Association of Towns. So I'm working with Lori right now to uh, answer some of those questions. So uh, that's, that's nice. Great. It's gonna be a pretty valuable uh, resource. She was very friendly too, I, very friendly. That's great news, good news. Okay, everybody, it is seven o'clock. Uh, so I'd like to call to order the regular Zoom meeting of the Woodstock Planning Board for December 17th, 2020. Um, we have the minutes from December 3rd. If there's no issues or questions, I'd like to uh, accept them as they are. So moved. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Aye. Melissa, do you have any new ad additions or Yep, just um, two quick ones because I got at, tried to get out of the office and get everything out. We had an email from Julia regarding Sumpus, but I sent you guys that last night. And then there was the Woodstock Home Share Survey. That's it. Okay. Okay, so under communications and announcements, we have the email from Dennis Larios uh, regarding uh, the Sumpus uh, subdivision, which is, they basically say uh, everything seems to be in order. Then we have an email from Tim Keefe regarding his subdivision, which we have on tonight, uh, basically saying that he's moved the driveway onto his own property and away from the disputed area. Then we have an email from Larry Allen regarding the 15 Rock City Road restaurant, stating that it does need a bigger septic tank and a grease trap system. And we have an email from Craig Leonard regarding 15 Rock City Road, which is about the parking, which we'll get into that later. Um, the only thing I can say about that is that we went back and forth a little bit uh, and um, with Ellen and with Bill regarding whether they had to buy parking spaces or not, and they do. They're, they're not exempt from, uh, from the parking restrictions. Um, then uh, we have an email uh, from uh, Mr. Quartararo's office, which is regarding the Keefe subdivision, regarding that ac access. And then we have the aerial photographs regarding the uh, Rizvi and Rimmer um, scenic overlay uh, development, which we'll get into a bit later. And we have a memo from Matt Rudikoff regarding to Sumpus, which uh, he'll be going through, or if he isn't, we have it and can go through it. I'm here, so I can go through it. Oh, great, great. Okay. And then we have a note from Ellen regarding the 15 Rock City Road, uh, which, if you remember, at their, at their initial meeting, I brought up the question of whether it was a change of use. And she says it is, but it's permitted in, the, uh, ham in, the, uh, in that district. Um, so the only issue would be the change of the site plan regarding the, the uh, change of use. So um, we have in front of us uh, three public hearings in a couple of minutes early. So uh, um, let me get back to uh, um, the aerial photograph, which we'll get into at the end of the meeting. I know we have a discussion about that, uh, that Connor uh, uh, instigated to get this uh, so that we can see what's in the scenic overlay at the time we make approvals. And um, 
so far. I think it's looking good. I have not personally seen the photographs, but I, I believe that the system is starting to go into place. And if Connor just mentioned, you know, making uh, a, an attachment to the deeds regarding uh, the scenic overlay uh, areas, that's that's a really good thing too. And uh, just to, not to interrupt, but um, I haven't seen them either. Are the aerial photographs available? Did they? Did we get an email? I'm running through them now, but I don't see anything. Yeah, I went to the Dropbox, which I didn't happen to open. I didn't have at the time. But um, uh, what do you know? What day it was sent? Melissa, I'm not sure. Tuesday or Wednesday? Okay. Oh, maybe that was before. Okay. Here we are. Got it. Oh wait, there's a Dropbox. I see. It's too. It's too large to send. Oh, okay. Um, here it is. Okay, I see. So I have to sign. I have to sign in. All right, uh, I'll work on that. Thank you. Yeah, I, ha I haven't looked at it either, but um, it, it sounds like a good idea and sounds like we've begun the process. So. Not that this does anything for you, but I printed, but it's much better if you guys look <laughs> at it. <laughs> okay. All righty. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open the public hearing. For Lewis Brindis and Deborah Brindis, Planning Board Case 20-1222, and it is a public hearing for a lot line revision to transfer 0 0.53 acres from a 9-acre plot and add it to an 11-acre plot, establishing two new lots of 8.51 acres and 11.79 acres in the R5 zoning district, and represented by Brooks and Brooks. Um, so if you all remember, we had this before us, we went through it, we didn't see any problems or objections, it was just a slight light, lot line revision, but it did uh, enter on the town of Shandaken, so we uh, postponed the hearing until we could hear back from Shandaken, which we have, and I think, Melissa, if you can correct me, because they don't have them, they said that was okay, Shand yep. the town of Shandaken was okay with it? Yep, they were fine with it. So any members of the board have any questions because we went through this. Um, oh, it's a public hearing. So first let me make a, entertain a motion to open a public hearing. So moved. All in Second. favor? Second. Aye. Okay. Aye. Is there anybody from the public here regarding this case? Patricia. Yes, um, I am here tonight representing the applicant in this matter. And if any member of the public or the board have any questions, I'm happy to try to address them. Okay, Melissa, was there any written or, or telephone uh, questions regarding? There was nothing. They're, they're good to go. Yeah, we went through this quite thoroughly last time. And like I said, the only issue was we wanted to get in touch with Shandake. And so uh, if nobody on the board has any more questions, um, uh, and entertain a motion to uh, to uh, adopt this well, resolution. Well, do we, do we adjourn? The public hearing. We have to get out of the public hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. Make a I'll make a motion to adjourn the public hearing. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So, Stuart, if you would be so kind as to. Uh, I just have I just have one question. I didn't write in my notes last month if we addressed seeker at all. I know because it's a lot line revision, it's a type two action and the board does not need to take any action, but does that need to be written in the minutes or is or because it's a type two, does it not get discussed at all? I just don't want their procedural to be a problem down the road if somebody questions seeker. Mm -hmm. Uh, Melissa, did, did we? I don't think there wasn't any issue with the with the environmental that you did for this for the lot line revision. So no issues came out. And in the resolution, once I send it out to you, it'll have stated that there was no there was no worries regarding that. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for checking. Okay. Any other questions uh, regarding this case? If not, Stuart could. Okay, so I'll make a motion. Uh... Uh, to uh, that the planning board uh, grant the application under 
Planning Board case number 20-1222, Luis Brindis and Deborah Brindis uh, for lot line revision to transfer 0.53 acres from 9.04 acres in lot SBL 25-2-4 and added to an 11.26 acre lot SBL 25.2-5, uh, establishing two new lots of 8.51 acres and 11.79 acres in the R5 zone. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank well, you. Okay, Patricia, thank, you thank you very much for your time. Happy holidays to all of you and uh, see you, you sometime too. next year. I'll thank talk you. to you soon. Thank you, Melissa. All right. Well, I'm still a few minutes ahead of schedule here. Um, Sorry, see. we just work so quick on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it up. Uh, you take care, Peter, you want to take care of the uh, the motion at the end to approve credits, we could take care of that. Sure, we sure. Could. Let's do that. Good idea. Okay, uh, entertain a motion to approve credits for uh, both James Conrad and um, Stuart. Second. Second. Thanks, Judy. Okay. Perfect. I'm, I'm in favor of the motion. Let's let the record reflect. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, I guess that's really it. Yeah, I was trying to think. Is it right? All right, well, we'll get started with this one. Um, this is a public hearing for Joseph Bellock and Laura Oswald, which is planning board case 20-1180A, which is a public hearing for a lot line revision application to transfer 4.044 acres from six downer lane, which was originally 8.8 .8 acres, and to add it to 52 Laura Lane, which is originally 7.2 acres, and then establishing two lots of 4.7 acres and 11.2 acres located in the R8 and the R3 zoning district. Um, so um, this is a public hearing, so I make a motion to open a public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, are there anybody, is there anybody here in regards to this case? Peter, before you do that, this is Stuart. Can we establish that the applicant and or representative are present? Because it wasn't scheduled till 20 after 7. I see that Ron Forty's name. Yes, is I'm present. It's oh. Mr. Bellick. Okay. Yes, I'm here. I just joined. Thank you. Do you expect uh, your attorney to, to be here? No, I'm uh, an attorney. I'm representing myself. Mr. Porty is retired and is no okay. longer The reason I asked is because he's listed. Okay. Yes. Thank you. He was on the paperwork too, so we made sure to include him. <laughs> yeah. Ron, was it Ron? Ron's retiring? Yes, he abandoned us halfway through this. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that on uh, two fronts. But uh, anyway, yeah. sorry, please continue. Is there anybody else uh, in the audience regarding this case? And uh, Melissa, have you got any letters or phone calls? No, nothing. <clears throat> okay, this is a case that uh, we went over before. Um, it's a, it's a complicated map, but it basically is making a lot line revision, uh, between those two lots. Um, we didn't have any problem with it, but I'll ask everybody on the board if there's any questions regarding this, because we went through it pretty thoroughly in the review. I've got the pop up if you need it, but I don't have any questions. Peter? Yeah. Um, I, I remember the map, but I'm trying to, in my head, figure out where this is in Downer Lane. Is this where the new building is? No, but it's it's sort of between uh, Laurel Lane uh, and the Downer it's property. It's, it's, it's in, in that, between that. It has a big tennis court, I believe, and stuff on the property. It's, it's pretty well developed. And um, 
want me to share a screen on it, John? Would that help any? Uh, yes, thank you. Okay. Okay, got it right here. That's it. All right. All right. So the lot line revision is a, is a little area. I think it's around by that pond um, where there's a, where the revision is. There's Downer Lane on the other side. Yeah, I see. The Downer Lane goes into the uh, Ken Downer's old house. Is that the one? Yeah. <laughs> yep. 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 So we, you know, we reviewed it. We didn't find any issues. So the lot line didn't affect any of the buildings or setbacks, septic or wells. Um, so again, unless anybody on the board has any questions regarding it. I mean, we'd have to get the actual subdivision map up if we want to look at the details of it. Uh, what questions do you have? I mean, I can get some information off of this. No, I think, uh, okay, it's nowhere near the flood zone then. No, uh, you know, I just realized where this is, near that hideous new barn, and there's the Sawk Hill. So this is uphill from that. Yeah. So, um, and the uh, wetlands are showing uh, there. So, go ahead. So, John, I can turn on the flood yeah. information, but I don't think it's anywhere there. This isn't involving with the uh, there's a big conservation easement somewhere in this area. Well, it's right across down, down the other side of Zena Road, right over here is the Zena cornfield. No, I understand that. No, but I, I believe that that whole area, they, whoops, you're jumping around a lot now, okay. Sorry, where do you want me to look at? The field that gets hayed every fall. Is, yeah. That's all under a big conservation. That's not on this property, is it? No, no. That's, the, that's the neighboring property. It's probably yeah. this one. Yeah. This is the one where they built the barn, which obviously was not under any kind of protection, unfortunately. But this is a big hay field, and the uh, the electric yeah. wires go yeah, which it. which can get flooded. Uh, okay. No. Okay. This is further yeah, away from that. Yeah. Got the it. The hill is right here, where my hand is moving. I see that. I mean, I've got a FEMA floodplain, but it doesn't show there. Uh, I've got a FEMA high risk. That doesn't show there either. No, it doesn't look like there's any flood area. What is this? Okay. Yeah, I, I, I think, town. <laughs> yeah, I think it was pretty clear on that. All right. Well, um, I'll make Thank a you. entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And Stuart, then if you'd be so kind as to uh, make a motion to adopt this resolution. He muted himself. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sorry. Actually, Hi, Stuart. It's one of my better renditions. I guess I'll have to do it again. Approve okay. the application for me. <laughs> I move to approve the application uh, under planning board case number 20-1180A. Applicants are Joseph Belloc and Laura Aswood for a lot line revision to transfer acreage as set forth in the application. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thanks, right. Joe. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. All right. Well, we, we are ahead of schedule. Um, what else do we have? Uh, we might as well um, continue to the discussion about the uh, aerial photographs and the scenic overlay. 
and we had it for the end at uh, unfinished business. Um, were there any questions? Did anybody on the board have questions about, um, you know, the idea of having the applicants uh, submit aerial uh, photograph, drone photographs of the properties being developed in the scenic overlay? What are our thoughts about the cost of it? I think they said it was around four or five hundred. I can't. It remember. was over five hundred dollars. Uh -huh. I sent you guys the invoice. They have thirty acres, so it wasn't a cheap deal to get that photograph. Uh huh. Now, Connor, the idea that would be just to photograph the area around where the house is being developed, correct? Yeah. The I mean, we. I, well, there's a couple things. Um, and I don't, I don't want to catch dispersions or anything like that. But to me, if I, after reviewing this uh, here and at the um, ZRC, it was my understanding that these drone operators can only fly up to 400 feet. So if we were doing like a logging operation or something like that, you know, where it really called for us to take you know, a large area more than what could be ascertained from 400 feet, you know, this would make more sense. I'm surprised that this was so expensive for having to take a larger shot because I, I don't know, I've worked hourly as, you know, a skilled person and it doesn't take very long to fly those drones up. And the fact that this is piled into one shot rather than like four separate shots tells me that personally and I'd, I'd be interested to hear what the operator has to say about the price because to me it shouldn't take him much more time to take that one photo than it does to take one of the area of disturbance and what all we really needed what in this case was the area of disturbance so I know I, um just Connor I spoke to Jess Walker who kind of set all of this up and it was difficult. And it, I mean, there were, he went through a few people to figure out who to get to who to use. Um, he put a lot of legwork into this. And I know this is new for all of us. And this is our first go around with it. Ooh, ooh. Um, but even like to get us that file, he had to play with that to be able to get it to fit on Dropbox. Um, I'm trying to think of his exact words. Uh, it wasn't easy or something like that. <laughs> was yeah. it still or was it video? It's just still. It is. I mean, you know, it may behoove us on the board and namely me uh, to reach out to a couple of operators that we can recommend, not just one, uh, but someone that we can recommend to be familiar with the work to kind of start to hone in on a um on a standardized on, on a more standard rate i i agree with that the um just spoke very highly of who he used and you know gave me permission to to use you know him but i think we we should come up with something to give the applicants to kind of feel their way through this and know what they're doing i just sure. need to know if you guys saw the picture if we can move on with the resolution and you accept yeah. it yeah, so, ba so basically, if I look, uh, I'm looking at the picture now, and if you just cut from the top left corner into like, you know, I, I would say drag that to where about, you know, three quarters of the way through the picture, and you're covering a little bit of the neighbor's property, the entire proposed driveway, and the area of disturbance, and then some. Uh, zooming out just a little bit more and you can get this sort of tree line that's in front of the house. So the only thing that I would want, that I would personally like to see on top of a photo like this is some indication, maybe an arrow pointing in a direction, just something that shows where the canopy is, like where, in what direction does uh, the what direction faces the outside of the scenic overlay. And from there, I think it should be pretty simple uh, to just draw a couple area disturbances, uh, not to, uh, sorry, to 
estimate the area of disturbance and create a sort of safe zone. You could even hand this, print this out and give it to the site reps uh, for when they go onto the site and it'll give them some good uh, uh, milestones and stuff like that. But yeah, um, I think I think it looks great. I think the quality is great. I think it's def. I think it looks way higher than it needed to be, and I don't think we lose anything for that except for I'm sure they're a little like, oh, you know, they had to jump through this hoop. And I appreciate it. Um, all I would say is, I stress um, that. You know, yeah, I forgot I, about it, and I can't find that it came into my Dropbox. If you look, it's on um, December 15th. There's nothing, there's nothing there right now. I have to look in a different place and see because what I looked at before, there's nothing there. Judy, do you have a Dropbox with your Woodstock ad government address? Or you yeah, probably you not. Know? Why would I? So how would, how would it get to you? Well, no, she sent it in an email. Um, right. Right, but you have, I think, don't you have to have a Dropbox account open for your Woodstock staff? Yeah, it won't That's give you access. Personal well. Yeah, I just, do, I just did it through my personal one. Um, but yeah, you, 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 wouldn't, you wouldn't see it in the email, but you would see the, the email that invites you to look at it. So, yeah. Hey, Connor, can I ask you a question? Um, yeah. What, this uh, aerial process, it, to me, it's similar to uh, a land survey that Peter and others do, and they certify where everything is on the on the map. Who would, who would be putting the markups on the photograph to show where the tree line starts and ends, and where the area of disturbance that's proposed would be? Who who's, would be responsible for marking that up? I would think it would be the uh, the architect. Just well, but even so, to be honest, if we have their site plan and we have the aerial photographs. You know, we can make we can not that I, I not that we necessarily need to superimpose one over the other, uh, but seeing them side by side can give us a a good idea of you know, basically you know what's going to happen, what's going to change. Here's what it looks like now, and then we can as a board start to say, all right, what if anything needs uh, special protection? Yeah, Peter, you want to get in the drone business? Uh, no, no, no. I don't think so. <laughs> I found it. Uh, I, we, I got we, it on my, on my iPad. We, we do work for the DEC where we actually locate trees uh, to put on a map so that they can uh, determine whether they've been changed or not. We actually locate tree lines. But uh any rate, okay, <clears throat> we have uh, another public hearing in front of us. And this is uh, okay. Can we can we make a motion to move on with the resolution for oh, yeah. the aerial photograph? Sorry. <laughs> yep. uh, I'll entertain a motion to accept the aerial photographs in the resolution. Perfect. So moved. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, guys. Okay. Okay. So we have a public hearing with Timothy Keith. Uh, planning board case 20-1091C, and this is the reopening of a recessed uh, virtual hearing for a subdivision application of 27.42 acre lot into two parcels of 24.06 acres and 3.36 acres in the R5 zoning district located at 1371 Sawkill Road. And... Uh, so I uh, entertain a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye, okay. So um, as you all remember, this was an issue where um, out of that, out of the bigger parcel, he was cutting out a 3.36 acre lot and the access road uh, went over a very tiny sliver, triangular piece of property that um, he, they couldn't get either a right of way over or permission to do so. So it's my understanding, and Keith is here, he can explain it, that he's moved the driveway down the road so it's completely on his property. So Tim, is that the case? Is that where we're at? That is correct. Uh, we've roughed in a uh, road approximately about 42 feet south of where the uh, entrance is right now. 
and it cuts back into and stays back off of his property and stays back on our property and uh, and uh, it's about it goes it starts at about 150 feet in the road and cuts out below his road it'll, it'll be reflected on the uh, final map and we get that uh, 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 done by the surveyor perfect you answered my question Tim thank you there you go I knew you were, I knew you were gonna ask I knew I we think alike <laughs> Okay, is there anybody else uh, in the meeting uh, in regard to this case? And Melissa, has anybody written or called regarding? I went back and forth with that law lawyer a little bit and I reminded him that right of way is really a civil matter and Mr. Keefe was moving it and his final plans will show that. And I didn't hear from him after besides telling me happy holidays. Right, yeah, I read his letter, correct. <laughs> <laughs> He'll talk to you, Mr. Heath. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. So does anybody on the board uh, have any questions regarding the subdivision? If not, um, I entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so uh, Stuart, would you be so kind as to make a motion to adopt uh, this resolution? Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm going to make a motion that the planning board approve the subdivision application filed on the planning board case number 20-1091C by Timothy H. Keefe um, as requested in the application. Do we hear a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Tim. Okay. Thank you. You guys have a, a nice Christmas. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Tim. Okay. Thank you. We already got enough snow for it, so I know we just we got a whole year's worth in one yeah. day. <laughs> so we're good to go. <laughs> All right, you. guys. Have a All good right. night. I'll talk to you, Melissa. Yes. Bye. Okay. So now we have two sketch plan reviews. One of them is the Michael the Stumpus. Uh, case, which is planning board case 19-1217. And there's going to be a Woodstock Wetlands and Watercourse Permit case 19-042. This is a revised sketch plan review of a minor subdivision application to create three lots from 60 acres and a Wetlands Watercourse Permit required to cross Wetlands Buffer and located in the R3 Zoning District at Chestnut Hill Road. So as you all remember, this was a, a big uh, subdivision presented to us. Um, and we all had a big issue with going through the wetlands. And the applicant has so kindly now made a revision to this application so as to not go through the wetlands. And it is just a three lot subdivision. And lot one has access to Chestnut Hill Road. So it doesn't have it doesn't need a watercourse permit. In lot two and lot three <clears throat> are accessed on the existing dirt road that is there, and a couple of portions of that uh, road go through the um, buffer, the wetland buffer. So those two lots will require getting a wetlands a watercourse permit. Um, which is a separate than the subdivision permit. So um, everybody has seen the site, so I don't believe we need to go back out there. So let me ask the applicant if he would uh, describe his proposal, if it's different than I've explained. Oh, Barry's here. Okay. I'll yeah, I'm, I'm here. Uh, I think Michael's on the line here too. Um, I think, uh, you know, since we met last, as you said, we dropped two of the lots. We eliminated the wetland crossing, uh, made one of the lots uh, 48 acres, um, and, uh, the, you know, kept the same access for the lots, although we eliminated one that was on Chestnut that required a small water crossing. So uh, right now we brought the, uh, you know, the disturbance to any uh, water course to only the buffer areas. Um, and uh, for the most part, there's an existing uh, woods road through that area. So the disturbance would not be that serious. Um, 
So, uh, you know, we'd like to move ahead with this project, three lots. We think, uh, you know, I, I personally, I think the applicant made a, you know, pretty big compromise on doing that, but yes. he's quite willing. Definitely so. Um, Matt has a uh, memorandum, and Matt, if you want to uh, kind of review it, make sure that we've all covered all our bases on this. Well, yes, and uh, thank you. And your summary, uh, Peter, and uh, um, Project Engineer Medenbach summary, were both, I agree with uh, entirely. Um, one thing I'd like to add is, you know, on the access road that services lots uh, two and three, it's long, but there is no um, actual restriction in Woodstock uh, regarding the length of that driveway. But it does require that there be uh, turnouts every certain number of feet. And in fact, this driveway does provide those those turnouts, so so I think that's that, that that's positive. Um, there, are, I'm sort of viewing this as really some uh, eyes to be dotted and T's to be crossed, although they're significant, uh, but they're really just small things to, to to button up. So first, let me say that in terms of Dennis's uh, de project engineer Dennis Larios's email, what it said was that you know he thinks that it's a, a good set of plans. Uh, he um, thinks that he does need a uh, what he calls a simplified SWIP, which really is sort of an erosion and controls plan that shows some details in, in the spots where, you know, that kind of uh, detail is needed. And that also that the applicant comply with, you know, the additional comments of, of the, the uh, board uh, regarding wetland uh, uh, decisions and um, our, our comments. So our comments are in my memo, and they're, I think, pretty straightforward. But just a, a you know, a, a detail is that uh, they should either amend or revise uh, their short form EAF, just sort of describing the, the changes in the project. Um, uh, but then, um, with regard to Seeker, there is something that the board could actually act on tonight, and that is that um, since this is a plan that, in our opinion, would be suitable for for you know, review by county planning, although there are some things that still need to be provided, um, uh, but, but would be worth reviewing. But it, I think that you could decide on seeker because it is an unlisted action uh, and not to make a negative declaration, but just to decide that under seeker, if it's an unlisted action, we've done this in the workshop and stuff that you can either do a coordinated review because there is another agency, the health department, uh, and send out lead agency requests and all that, or you can do it as an uncoordinated review. And that's something that you could really decide tonight that you're going to do it as, a, as an uncoordinated review, which based upon the complexity of the project, which is minimal, uh, is really appropriate. So you really could decide to do an unlisted seeker review, which would be a, you know, a, a small step forward. Um, the other thing would be with regard to the wetland, um, you know, there still is a wetland permit required for impacts in the buffer zone. And of course, we recognize that it's one uh, way less than what it was uh, in terms of wetland impacts. Uh, two, that it's also less because as Barry said, there is an existing uh, right of way there, but there really needs to be some um, uh, detailing uh, in the uh, delineation report as to what that impact would be. You know the area that impact, et cetera. So it can really can be a a, a simplified uh, wetland delineation report, but something that you know addresses uh, the requirements of that section of the zoning code, which is the wetlands and water cost protection standards uh, 34G. So that's that's just that, and uh, and that's not a big a big thing. Um, very often when a good you know this is a good wetland delineation, very often a wetland delineation report is sort of goes along with the the delineation itself. So that shouldn't be a, diff, a, a, a large thing to do, but it, and it is required by the ordinance. Um, uh, we want the plans to indicate that the, um, that, the, that the wetlands and the wetland buffers are under the jurisdiction of the town's uh, wetland and watercourse uh, law, which just should be a notation somewhere in, in one of the boxes or, or whatever. Um, and then um, with, with regard to proposed lot three, which is the, um, a 40 plus acre uh, site. So I, I, if it's the planning board's intention that there'd be no further subdivision on, on that, of that land, that we would you know, request that, that, that that be noted uh, on, the, on the subdivision plat. And that um, there's also some discussion of there being a conservation easement. And, and that's something that I guess is really up to the applicant. Uh, now that there's less wetland impacts, it, it seems like 
it's less important. And if development is restricted, it may no longer be important. But that discussion of a conservation easement should be uh, uh, put to bed. Uh, if because if if it if there is going to if you are going to proceed with that, then there needs to be a legal instrument uh, drawn up and and uh, identification of an acceptable conservation uh, hold you know easement holder and. Um, uh, but prior to the granting uh, of the approval based on that easement. So that should be decided by the applicant if he is going for that conservation easement, but still notation on the plans about uh, no further subdivision. Um, again, according to the, um, the um, uh, wetland and water course law, one of the requirements is one of the basic requirements is that there be you know, wetland disturbance and mitigation plan. Well, here, you know, as we know, it's, it's lessened substantially. But there is, you know, the use of the buffer uh, for the expanded footprint of the road, and based upon, you know, the details of how that road gets designed, if the, whatever impacts there are, just should be identified. And if there's any recommended mitigation for it, then that should be proposed. And um, the, the mitigation plan would just normally normally include, you know, the bulleted details, and that's just from the ordinance. And again, it's really up to the board to make those discretionary judgments. You know, based upon the seriousness of what the impacts are, how much mitigation or revegetation might be warranted. But it really, you need to see what the impact is before you can decide what the um, uh, what what the mitigation should be. And so we know the impacts lessen, but there still is some impact, and that should just be described in this in this plan. Um, on the driveways, uh, there were just a couple of things that. Uh, we felt there should be just a confirmation that the site distances uh, comply with the subdivision regs cited in the memo, uh, that there's a labeling on the common driveway uh, that um, makes reference to the, uh, to the meets and bounds identification, There's the details of that common driveway being properly recorded, uh, the legal driveway access, which I'm sure Barry's done many times, a utility and maintenance agreement. Uh, for the, uh, the the two property owners to enter into, um, uh, and then just add things to the zoning table that document the, the driveway uh, construction compliance with subdivision regulations, and uh, just referral to the fire department for there to confirm that that driveway and the turnaround at the end of it is okay with them. And then the other issue has to do with this recreation reservation. And, you know, that needs to be, uh, the applicant needs to state how he's intending to uh, comply with that requirement of the subdivision and um, uh, whether there's going to be a set aside of land uh, or payment in lieu of uh, uh, consistent with subdivision regulations. Um, uh, and, uh, and of course, if there is the conservation he's been used, that in of itself isn't really recreation purposes. But anyway, the applicant knows how to do that. He has to just have to address that requirement in the ordinance. And then, um, uh, uh, and this last item is just that the engineer would have comments and, and we discussed those. So it, it, sound, it took a few minutes to go through, but they're city pretty much I-dotting and T-crossing and it wouldn't be inappropriate for this plan uh, with the revised EAF and, and some of the revised material to be submitted, uh, either forwarded to the county planning department or or scheduled for public hearing. I mean, I think that's really a, a discretion of the planning board at this point to, to that would reflect their unanswered questions or whether they want to see the the items mentioned in this email uh, before they take that action. But that's up to the board at this point. We think it's a major a change, and that the board accomplished a great deal in this review. Go ahead, Judy. Can I ask a question? Sure. Matt, um, if he does the conservation easement, which, by the way, I think is an absolutely brilliant solution to the problem, Mr. Tompas, um, are there rules that would prevent the conservation area from being used, like for hiking trails or some other recreational use? Well, if if it, if the creation of a trail, you know, necessitated construction. Or fill. Now that would uh, be a problem. Or, or yeah. Grading, that would be something that would you know require wetland permits. Right. Um, Can I chime in at this but, point? But if there are, but but certainly you know people who are going to be living there, you know, can be you know can they're they're supposed to follow certain rules about wetlands, but you know 
it's just using walking around on on their land and uh they can do it you know and if there's areas that if there are areas that are upland obviously there are that can be walked on of course they can walk on it so it's really that's just using your private property no no and that's not the question i'm asking but mr sampas wanted to add something i think sorry yes. forgive me for interjecting I spoke to my land use attorney, Mike Moriello, about the subject, and I was totally open to the conservation easement, but he told me that we can, the problem with the conservation easement is that we need a third party that's willing yeah. to back it up, basically to maintain it. And he thinks that we could draft a highly restrictive, as he termed it, negative easement, which is basically just backing up what already is, you know, the, the rules uh, you know, the restrictions on, on wetlands, nobody can build there anyway. There's no, there's no, and you know, and I'm willing to concede nobody will build anything uh, on the 48 acres in the future. The only thing that I would ask for is potentially maybe to do, if I would be allowed to do a little farming, you know, not commercial farming, you know, just kind of something, you know, I don't want to be restricted from putting a little patch of uh, potatoes down there. But um, beyond that, I'm not looking for I'm not looking to build a house. I'm not looking to build any structures. I just, uh, according to uh, Moriello, we could create a negative easement that would be just as restrictive as a conservation easement. Let me uh, suggest something that, uh, you know, the conservation easement is, is a great idea, but it already is in conservation. The wetlands and the wetland buffers are protected by the wetlands water course right. uh, law of the town. So all the restrictions are already in place, which is why we have to go through uh, the permit to go through the buffer as it is. So it's really already basically uh, a protected area. So I, I don't well, think you need to do here's, anything Here's further. my question. My understanding was, and I got this from general information, not anything uh, authoritative, that a conservation easement of record gives some degree of tax abatement and maybe the land conservancy would be interested in working with you anyway i, I brought thought. sorry judith i brought that specifically up to mike moriello because obviously that incentivizes me to to do the conservation easement if i can save you know even two three thousand dollars a year in real estate tax is great but he said that the plus minus is just it's he thinks that it's unrealistic that Anybody who want to take on the responsibility of it? That I, and this is just me reiterating what he told me. I, I'm not. I have no experience with this. He said it would be hard to find somebody to take the responsibility of this. I mean, know, managing you, this conservation easement. What you've done already, which is to produce this map, which uh, um, which the engineer has done, and and you, and through the wetlands uh, delineation, you've created a wetlands map, an accurate wetlands map with the buffers. That's record now, so that's really um, that's that's really the the best you can do. We now have a map showing exactly where they are, and uh, and that's that's a, a, a record now. And I would add that the notation that we are suggesting be on the plan about no further development, along with what Mr. Moriello has in mind about a negative easement regarding future use of the property, that's that's very strong protection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so now, as to going on to getting ready to set a public hearing, Matt, you were saying uh, that the board should decide whether to declare itself the lead agency in, in the environmental review. Right. You, you, what you're saying is we don't think we need to do a coordinated review on this, right. which would involve the lead agency designation. So you're just sort of agreeing, uh, if you choose to, that we, you're going to do an unlisted action which means that you can just proceed with everything that is um, that, that is in the memos and that includes the erosion plans and that when that information is received, you are, as lead agency, which you've declared yourselves, are prepared to make a, a negative declaration if that's what you so choose at that time. But you would send this to the county planning department before you make that determination. You know, you want their input uh, from that, just like you... Uh, uh, Want the input? Yeah, from, uh, can I from interrupt? The we, Matt, do we? Just, can I just interrupt? Uh, do we need the Ulster County Planning Board advisory opinion on this? Yes. 
Okay, so we're not on. What what, tri what triggers it, Matt? Because it's not within 500 feet of a of a of a state highway or anything. Yes, it is. It is. I believe so. Yeah, I think it is. I'm I'm I just lost. I know that was something that we had um, in the um, prior memos, I believe. And so yeah, and I, I thought we decided they didn't have to go to the county because I don't believe we're within 500 feet of anything. I seem to recall that as well, but uh, yeah, no, we're not. That we're not. So I'll just double check that. I'll just that, that isn't crucial for, for tonight. I'll, I'll just okay. double check. check right. This was the first I heard about the county that. I didn't. Yeah. I haven't yeah. heard that come up before. So maybe, yeah. uh, maybe that was my own. Maybe that was my own. It isn't actually written in this memo. So I think that maybe it's just my. Uh, I just. I just misstated it. My only recollection of this matter was that we only had to go to the local uh, highway board right. and right. and deal with them, and we didn't have to go to the county. That's how I recall. County planning. County planning. Yeah. Which which reminds me, do you uh, have a curb cut? Approval, approved curb cut for the yes, the highway. Yeah, the, yeah. we superintendent approved the drive. You approved I'm the other driveways too. So, Reynolds. yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay. It, it's near Witch Tree and Chestnut Hill, both of which are town roads, I believe. Yeah, right. so that's right. So, that's so. Um, let me poll the board as to whether we all agree that uh, um, will be the uh, the acting agency and it will um, that. We will, uh, as Matt said, um, approve it ourselves. For seeker, for seeker, for seeker. That will that the, that we planning board will do that. Yeah, you're just declaring yourselves lead agency as in an unlisted action. Okay, so Matt, b before we can um, set a public hearing, is there anything else that needs to be added to this application? The, before we can have a public hearing set. Well, I think I, I think that um, you really should have the um, uh, the uh, the erosion the, the simple SWIFT that talks about erosion control uh, uh, provides the erosion control details erosion control details and that also the um, it's up to the board uh, to what extent that the board wants the wetland disturbance and mitigation plan and the um, wetland uh, delineation report. So those can be simple documents, but um, uh, the board can decide whether it wants those before it is um, uh, um, taking that action. Okay, John, uh, John had a question. Peter, since this is a three lot now, what would the fee be to the recreation fund instead of developing the conservation easement? Well- That's in my office, I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> The fee per lot, I've forgotten myself now. I think it's 500. I, I can't quite remember what the fee per lot is. I haven't but, looked at it enough to know, yeah. But um, the issue is that you have two choices. You can either set aside land uh, within the subdivision for recreational purposes, meaning for the residents of the subdivision um, because they're not near a, a, a either a state or town recreational area. But what the, what the code says that the area set aside for recreation has to be good for recreation. I mean, it, it can't be a wetland or, or, or a hillside. Yeah, but that's part of the problem, Peter. Right. Yeah. I think that- I, I believe the applicant's willing to pay the fees. I'm sorry, what was that, Barry? The, the applicant's willing to pay the fees on the recreation. Yeah, I, I yeah. think that- a reasonable way out. And uh, because I don't think a conservation easement, quite frankly, is a rational thing to do with this property. I agree. I agree. I, I can get back to you guys next week and look up the prices and just, you know, send an email to you guys just so you have an idea too. I recall it wasn't a, it wasn't like thousands and thousands. No, of I dollars. think it's three or 500 an acre. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And, Not and an acre, for a, a lot. A lot. For a lot. For a lot. lot. <laughs> And, and the point of it is kind of the point of it's kind of lost because the idea was this recreational fees was supposed to be so the town could buy land for parks and <laughs> we haven't raised enough recreational fee to buy half an acre in twenty years so swimming <laughs> <laughs> but 
Um, let me just address the wetland watercourse permit for a minute. That's a separate uh, a special use permit. It's a separate public hearing. And it has its own set of defined uh, steps we have to go through. Um, so that's something that the board, that Melissa will have to set a time for us. We actually go through step by step um, and, and satisfy all the conditions. And then <clears throat> we will determine the area, the exact area of the buffer that's to be disturbed. And then we would ask that that, act, that amount of land is added to a buffer elsewhere on the property. That's the mitigation to whatever square footage uh, that we're uh, going through of the buffer that's replaced somewhere else um, on the property. Um, so that's basically, so we have to go through findings. Um, the board has to go through, that's a separate uh, step for the wetlands and watercourse permit. Right. So there's actually two issues. There's the subdivision is one public hearing and the water, water course is a separate public hearing. Can, can, they, can the public hearings be held simultaneously? Yeah, yeah, certainly can. Certainly can and it's probably better to get the wetlands one done first because then that can be incorporated into your final design. So as any uh, members of the board have questions regarding this, because it's um, really come a long way uh, from where we were, which is really good. Uh, I do have one that uh, Julia Blelock brought up from the, from the Environmental Commission, <clears throat> a question about the culvert, just simply asking if, I guess to ask uh, Barry if, if that's, if they were just concerned that the culvert was in the best spot which I'm just asking for them because. Um, right, we, we'll, we'll provide more detail on that. Okay. We'll, we'll uh, provide more detail uh, in that the whole buffer area and exactly what takes place in that. Good. Um, so okay. I, I, so I just, what we don't have to was go one, to Go ahead. Yeah, there was one low, low lying part of the, of the, as you get to lot three, where we said we would put a couple, you know, Barry's going to engineer the culverts. That's what they, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Peter has has uh, the applicant or his engineer seen the communication from uh, Julia about the culverts? Or no, just... I just got that like literally last night and sent right. it to you guys. So would it be a good idea to pass that on to them so they can see exactly what the WBC's concern is? Yep. Uh, I will do that idea. tomorrow. And uh, it's also I, I like to mention the WC was very uh, complimentary. Uh, to Sumpus and to Barry for um, making these changes. So they were quite pleased with that. So I, the next step, I guess, um, before we can set a public hearing is to make sure that uh, we've got all the other, everything we need um, finalized for the public hearing. And I guess the only two things that Matt has brought up is the, um, the secret which we have to do. Um, and um, and then we have to, the planning board has to go through the wetlands watercourse permit uh, before we can set a public hearing for that. So Melissa, are there, is there any other issues that um, come to mind regarding this to get? No, I think Barry kind of addressed, you know, the erosion, which was a major concern. And he said he has some plans with the culverts, which was Julia's concern, the WEC. Um, I think, I think we've come really far, guys. Okay, so, um, Melissa, we won't be setting a public hearing right now, but, at, um, uh, you'll have to add to our agenda somewhere down the line to get these two things sorted out so we can set a public hearing. Okay. Right. So, so, uh, when's the next, uh, meeting that we can, um, be at to review the, um, the water permit? application and then when do you need in the final information from me how about you email me when you kind of have it together and then you and i can talk and then we'll set it up okay all right Sounds so we good? don't need the board to schedule that. i could just do that with me you melissa you could schedule with me yeah. Just, yeah and i'll get you okay. in as soon as you got it barry okay all right. 
But, okay, but yeah. I would like to. And I would then, like uh, to say, and I would just like to add when, with regard to that next meeting, we we should have we should have already received, you know, the revised DAF, the um, right. the, the the wetland mitigation plan, the, the the request by Dennis Larios of the erosion and control, you know, simple swift. Right. So just the next submission that addresses the items in in, in the uh, in the review, and then and then the, from that you have right. a complete application. From which the planning board can go through the uh, water course and wetlands checklist and make that determination and schedule the public hearing. One, one yeah, yeah I, I understand that. Okay, good. Thank you, Barry. Peter, since um, our next so, meeting happens to fall on New Year's Eve. Oh, it doesn't. We canceled that one. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's what the question was. Okay. Last year we decided we weren't going to have it. Our next meeting's January 7th. Okay. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but we clarified that. You count on me for this, John. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so let me ask you, I just have another question, uh, uh, Peter, what you were saying about um, maybe not needing the conservation easement. Did we just uh, put restrictions on the file map? I mean, I, I don't think you need to do any of that. The, the, the map shows the wetlands and the buffers, and they are protected under the Woodstock Wetlands and Watercourse Act. Uh, and all the restrictions are in that. So you, I don't think you need to do anything other than, you know, once you, once you file just that map. To, just, to, just identify it on the file map. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, like it, it, I don't remember. If I just took the map down. I had it up. I don't remember, but it should, the map should have a note saying who the delineator was and when it was delineated. So the right. only question is whether there's some way he could abate taxes and other than that there's nothing to no do. we've had that question come up a lot of times no uh, just you have you have to say you're lucky to have wetlands <laughs> <laughs> they're not tax exempt no but um you can grow food on your own property <laughs> without <laughs> a permit <laughs> so no okay. worries about that enough okay any other questions uh, from the board regarding this case if not we'll Melissa will uh, eventually get us um, set up to get everything else we need together. To have I a look forward here. to getting the stuff from Barry. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank all you, right. everybody. Thank, that one. thank you. Thank you all very much. Good luck. Thanks, thank you. everybody. Holidays, guys. Thank you very much. Okay. We have one more sketch plan, which is uh, Heather Ann Byer and Matthew Samuel which is a sketch plan review of a special use permit application to install a ground mounted solar array located in the R5 <clears throat> zoning district at 260 Abbey Road. Um, and the applicant, uh, or I guess uh, Josh from uh, Solar is here, maybe not. Yeah, I'm here on behalf of Mr. Okay. Samuel. Okay, so. Um, and that is in the overlay district, by the way. It's in the overlay, but in our which we i guess we're not going to have a a a meeting on the 30th this month a workshop but in our workshop meeting when we go over to comp plan in the comp plan is the idea to to make it easy to put solar systems on your property i, I entirely understand and support that i'm just making the observation so we really is... don't have any restrictions um, they're non-reflective. Is, is that true, true Josh? The panels are non-reflective? Yes, that's so, correct. So they're non-reflective. And even though they are a structure, as far as the zoning code goes, um, we basically permit um, solar systems. So if anybody on the board has a question about it. They're ground-mounted, right? That's correct. There, yeah, there's a 24 panel ground mounted system. Yep. So they're not going to be very tall to begin with. They probably wouldn't be visible from much of anywhere. Not mm -hmm. from their property. Yeah, there's not much visibility from anywhere where they're going to have that installed on their land. Now, the only question would be, is there any clearing involved, tree clearing to get these panels in? Um, let me look if they gave me anything like that. I don't believe so. I think that the area is all set where they were going to put them. Okay. Um, Let me just look at my notes really quick. I mean, the only concern, we wouldn't have an issue with clearing to put the panels in as long as it didn't expose it to the view shed. 
So yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't think yeah. there's any clearing at all on this one. Stuart, um, you had just... a question? Yeah. Well, what makes them non-reflective? The material that they are, they're a, like a it's a black coating they put on it. So their anti-reflective coating is what is actually installed on the panel itself. Okay. For the simple fact that we don't want the sun bouncing off them and making that astronomic thing and stuff like that. So it's a black metallic coating they put on it that is an anti-reflective in the paint itself. John has a question. Well, Josh, is this a three by eight? The array. Three the array? Um, let me see. I know it's 24 panels. I want to say it's a three by eight, but I'm not. Oh, let me see the notes they gave me. Come did on. We get, did we get a, uh, a drawing of that? You did. Yep. You guys have the site plan. Yeah, Melissa should have all that stuff. Yep. If my computer would kindly get me to where I need, I would be all set. <laughs> Your company, Josh? Yeah, Castleman Solars. And yep, we're partnering with uh, Solar Foundations is the one that actually installs the ground mounts for us. I think it's uh, six high by four across, Josh? Yes. 26, oh. eight by 19? Yep. I brought I'm the sorry. files home with me. Yeah, you're right on it. See, you did get you, the star for the day. <laughs> did you say six high by four wide? So we're talking yeah. about an overall height that's considerable. That's not the usual way you would do it, is it? It's got no Yeah, way. that's it. That's the same way we do it. And where it's on their property, it's even with the height, you, you don't see it where it is on the site plan. If you guys have the site plan in front of you, you're not gonna see that from any road. It's I'm trying to find it my what date should we get that, Melissa? Uh probably a week and a half ago. Oh yeah, preliminary, no, this is an agenda. Yeah, because it's 200 feet from the actual residence in the wooded lot where there's a clearing. So it's 200 feet in their backyard where nobody's gonna see it from the road. What about other properties, Josh? The, uh, the way the trees and everything are, the adjacent properties should not have visibility of that. When the, when the trees drop their leaves? That I don't know. We've never had that question before, honestly, for a solar system. I mean, we've never, we don't really worry about a seasonal effect on it. We've never had a board bring that question to us. So that I actually, I, I don't have a definitive answer for you. Well, you can no longer say that it was never brought up. Can that's you? true. That's, <laughs> that's a new one for our book right there. <laughs> I think with the way it's layered on their property that there should be no aspect that they should be able to see it just from the vest property that they have is the property visible from uh, sorry john and me to interrupt on you no josh just for curiosity the wattage per panel 275 300 three and a quarter these panels are 400 watts per panel they're 405 watts per panel yep and we're doing a 24 24 of those so it's 9.72 kilowatts for the system and the manufacturer of the 400 watt panel system. They're the LG, they're LG Neon R's, which is wow. a pretty popular panel. Yep. It's come a long way since I got my license to install solar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, the way they come out with their technology, crazy now. Uh, I, have a, I have a question. Go ahead. go ahead, Stuart. Is this array, is it visible from down slope or up slope from the property? Not with the pictures and everything that we did from the aerial, there's no adjacent property that should be able to see the placement of those panels. And in the house is not up on like a mountain that like if you're down another section of town, you look across or up, you could see, you could see. No, yeah. no, not to my knowledge of what, uh, not of the Ulster County parcel viewer that we have. No, it's not on the hill or anything like that. It's pretty much in a secluded wooded area. I okay. can do a screen share and you can point it out. That's the property, right? Well, yep. Let me get back to full screen here. Hold on a second. Uh, good grief. 
Is that yeah, that's the prop. Yeah, right there's the property. So there's not any. There's no adjacent back here that they're going to see, and there's nobody across here that is going to see their house. There's no proper. There's no houses anywhere that can see where their array is going to be over here. Okay. Thank you. All right. If anybody Thank else, you, Judith. I appreciate that. Yeah, it looks anybody like. Anybody else on the board have questions regarding this? Because um, I believe we could, if the board agrees, we could waive further review under the comp plan of trying to promote solar. Concur. All right. So uh, I agree. We uh, therefore we'll waive further review, and uh, Melissa will get you the paperwork you need to do it. Perfect. So Talk, no public, Josh. no public hearing or anything like that. We're just good to no, go. No, no, we we're going to waive that. Okay, you, I appreciate that. You, Josh, you need paperwork from me, so we'll talk. I'll uh, work on that next week. Um, we'll talk. Perfect. I appreciate it, guys. You all have a good holiday. Thank you very much. Okay, Josh. Thank you. you too. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Okay, we have uh, one last thing. We have to uh, make a motion to adopt the draft resolution uh, for the one we just did for Brindis and Bullock. Um, um, There's a few if you want to lump them together. Yeah, and and then and then we have the one for uh, lot line revision for Keith. So, uh, Stuart, if you want to, all right, I make a motion that the planning board adopt the resolutions as drafted, uh, approving the applications in Brindis, which is planning board case twenty dash twelve twenty two, uh, Bellock and Aswad planning board case twenty dash eleven eighty a, and. Keith Planning Board case number 20-1091C. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, guys. Okay, so now the most important issue, since we're not going to have our uh, workshop meeting on the 30th of this month, is uh, John, is this your last meeting with us? No. He's got another year. I have another year yet. Oh, have to we have put another, up year. another okay. year. Okay, good, 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 good. You're trying to kick Ooh. him out, Peter? Oh no, I was. I this. I, for some reason, I thought it was this year. Sounds I like told him he couldn't leave me. me. <laughs> he was just being ceremonial. <laughs> Whose term is up, Peter? <laughs> Somebody's term is up. Every James. Year? James, I think James? Ashley was working on that for us. <laughs> James, was, James was the filling in the last part of uh, mm -hmm. Paul, wasn't he? So he has Yeah, I, I emailed James. He did email back, continuing, I believe. Okay. So we're requesting to. So we're good. Yeah, I have to sign off because I have a commitment to attend to. So I see. Right. Happy right, holidays, you, Stuart. Stuart. Right, thank Stuart. you. Happy holidays. Yeah, have, a, have a nice holiday, everybody. Peter, All right. we have stuff to approve the <clears throat> credits at the bottom of the agenda. We, we did it in between. We did that already. We, we snuck it well, in that's between. Why I, we're going we'll to get <laughs> Okay, well, that's great. On good news, we've got a full board. And we, we don't have to worry about any replacements, so uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And everybody have a good uh, holidays and time off and enjoy the snow. Yeah. <laughs> it's in thoroughly enjoyed. Have a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Thanks for sharing, Peter.